Now, I want to pause and, and just give a little bit of a, of a summary of, of Balaam. Because Balaam is a very interesting character in the Bible. It's a, it's a very interesting story, what happens with Balaam. And, uh, you know, he's famous probably because Balaam's ass speaks to him. You remember the story. He's, um, and, and Balaam could be a little bit confusing, too. Because in the beginning of the story, everything looks like Balaam's a good guy. He's a prophet. He says, you know, oh, I'm only going to say what the Lord tells me. I can't say anything else. You know, I don't care what you give me. I will not say anything other than what God tells me. And that's what I'm going to do. And he seems pretty firm on it. But there is a couple things that as you read the story, you're thinking like, well, that's kind of weird. What, why is it like that? We're, we're one, like, why did God want to kill him? Why was the angel standing in the way as he was on his way to the king to, to curse Israel? Why, why was the angel there when we, it, seeming, it seemed like God said, hey, go, go with them? Well, we're going to turn to that story. Turn, if you would, to Numbers chapter 22. You see, Balaam said a lot of the right things, but his, one, his heart wasn't in it. His heart was not there, and he could prove that from Scripture. I'm going to prove it to you now. One of the things that we saw in Joshua, it says that Balaam, also the son of Beor, the soothsayer. There's a little bit of evidence that Balaam really wasn't a good guy. So I don't know what a soothsayer is. Well, think about wizards, magic, necromancy, all these things that are mentioned in Scripture and talks about, you know, oh, you shall not sh suffer a witch to live. And anyone who's, who's, who's um, involved in the, in the dark craft or these dark arts and the magic and the witchcraft, it's the death penalty. God's just like, get him out of the land. It's wickedness. So that's who Balaam was. He's a soothsayer. He's a tarot card reader. He's a palm reader. He's a psychic, whatever you want to call it. That's what he's into. He's into soothsaying. But let's look at the story here in Numbers chapter 22. Look at verse number 18. The Bible says, And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. So see, that sounds good, right? Say, yeah, it's right on. You tell him. I'm not going to do anything unless God tells me. Verse number 20. Now he hears from God. Because, you know, these people are trying to get him to go with them to go to Balak. And he says, well, I'll ask God. We'll see what God says. Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. Verse number 20. God actually comes to Balaam. So now, you know, again, when you, when, I don't know about you, at least when I start reading this, you start thinking like, well, wow, God's actually talking to this guy. He must be a prophet. I mean, God's talking to him, right? Look at verse number 20. It says, And God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, if the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, thou shalt, that shalt thou do. So that second part there where he's saying, hey, only what I tell you, that's what I want you to do. We see Balaam basically like repeating that phrase. So we're thinking, hey, he's right in line with God. But the first part of that verse, it says, if the men come to call thee, Rise up. So he's saying if those people that were come, if they actually come back to your house and call for you to come, then go with them. But look at what Balaam does in verse 21. It says, And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. He didn't wait for them to come and call him. He's just like, All right, I got the okay, let's go. And he goes, and that's why God got, gets mad with him. That's why there's the angel standing in the way. And when Balaam gets, gets mad at the donkey he's sitting on because he's ramming him into the wall because he's trying to get around this angel that the, that the donkey could see, the ass could see him standing there. And he's got his sword drawn and, he's just, you know, and he starts hitting the, the ass. And the ass is just like, God gives his miracle. The ass is able to speak with a man's voice and actually talks to Balaam. And is just like, you know, what have I ever done wrong to you? Why are you hitting me? And what, what I love about the whole story is that it's like Balaam doesn't even bat an eye that his donkey's just talking to him. He answers him right back and just like, what are you doing, you know? 
It's not even a big deal that, that his ass is just sitting there talking to him. But, but then, of course, he finds out, like, oh, you know, I'm sorry, God, I'll go back. What do you want me to do? You know, but, but this, the, um, his mindset and where his heart is, he cared about the reward. He honestly cared about the reward. He didn't listen to what God said to do. He just, just, he got so excited when he heard that from God that he just went and did it. He didn't actually obey what God told him. He was greedy of the reward because he was a false prophet. 